something has gone wrong in the world. I want to suggest that it's a lack of community family codes and conduct. Things that we teach in the home find their way out in society. Something has gone wrong in the field. I want to suggest that in times like this that we must understand that the biggest trick of the devil is make the world feel that he does not exist. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus gives parables. He moves into this mode of teaching parables. In Matthew chapter 13, rather, there's seven parables in that chapter alone. The first parable uh, is about what we hear and the lack thereof. But the second parable that I want to look at starts in verse 22. It deals with what we see and the lack thereof. Jesus gives a story of an owner of a field that employs workers to till his field, to cultivate his seed, to the field. He gives them seeds, good seed, to plant into the, the, uh, the field with anticipations that he would have a good bumper crop. The employers do, do exactly what the owner says. They plant seeds in the field, and after a few days later, the particular pastor says that while they slept, an enemy came in and sowed bad seeds among the good seeds. They sowed a seed that's called a Darnell seed, and the Darnell seed looks a lot like wheat, but its main goal is to choke the life out of the wheat. After a few days, the workers notice that uh, the tares are now growing among the wheat, and they go to the landowner, and they ask the question, did not we sow good seed? And the landowner says, of course. He says, well, why are there tares growing among the wheat? Here it is. The landowner said, an enemy had done this, that while men slept, the enemy comes in undetected and makes a subtle exit. But he tears up everything. He plants bad seeds. And so they ask, well, can we take up the tear with the wheat? No, no, the landowner says. He says, no, let the tear and the wheat grow together. And at harvest time, I'll send my workers. They'll come collect the tares, place it in bundles, throw it in the fire, take the wheat, put it in the barn. Let me say that one more time. I'll send my workers at harvest time. They'll take the tear, put it in bundles, throw it in the fire, take the wheat, and put it in the barn. Here's the symbolism in that text. God is the landowner. Satan is the enemy that comes in to sow bad seed. The tear are the children of Satan, but the wheat are the children of God. The fire represents hell, but the barn represents heaven. Let me say that one more again. God is the home or the landowner in that text. Satan is the enemy that slips in undetected and moves out subtly. The children of wrath or the children of Satan are the tear that choke out the life of the wheat. The wheat are the children of God. The fire represents hell, the barn represents heaven. And what the landowner is saying and God is saying in this text is that you just leave them alone at harvest time, at judgment. I'll do the separating. I'll take the children of wrath, fire, children of God, the barn, heaven. How do you handle life when you're dealing with all of this craziness in life, when you're expecting God to do great things and all of a sudden an enemy slips in? I'm talking to the married couple who wants a marriage that's managed by he heaven, but has been manipulated by hell. I'm talking to the home that started off like a little house on the prairie, but ended up like a nightmare on Elm Street. I'm talking to the church that wants to be missionary in movement, but stationary in status. I'm talking to black people that once had pride of black fists raising in the, in the air, but now sagging pants of shame. An enemy has done this. What do you do once you detect the enemy? Here it is, three things, then I'm gonna sit down shout my own self happy. In the event that you are experiencing the enemy moving in your life undetected and you wonder all of a sudden where did this come from, the first thing you need to do is start in your home, your own home. Make sure that your home is built on a solid foundation. Psalm 127 says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it, except the watchman keepeth the city, they wake it but, but in vain. Here it is. God needs to be both architect 
and in charge of homeland security of your home. It has to start in your home with Christian family values. I couldn't wait to slip that commercial in. What are the Christian family value pillars? First of all, foundation, that's having a God-fearing home. But then observation, that is seeing life through the lenses of Holy Scripture. The word says, thy word, O God, is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. But then obligation, being clear as the, as the roles that God has divinely designed in his biblical blueprint called the Bible. The role of the husband, the role of the wife, and the role of the children. But then fourth is maturation. That is becoming or belonging to a Bible-fearing, Bible-teaching, rather, church like Calvary Baptist Church, that we might move from membership to discipleship. But then finally, there's motivation. And that is what's taught in the home should reflect out in society and that our light should so shine against the backdrop of a dark world. It starts in your home, but then second of all, you must watch and pray. My grandfather, the late Joseph Allen, who now takes the long sleep, used to say, boy, watch everybody and watch yourself. You gotta watch yourself to make sure that there are no signs of enemy invasion in your own life. Prayer is the answer and faith unlocks the doors. But then thirdly, the divine directives. This home, this landowner says, don't mess with them, leave them alone. At harvest time, I'll send my workers. I'll take the tear, put it in the fire. I'll take the wheat, put it in, in the barn. Psalm 37 says this, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down. Trust in the Lord and do good during difficult times. I'm gone.